So you've got your monochrome camera and you've got your filters, luminance, red, green, and blue, and you've recorded some images of the moon. Now what do you do? How do we stack multiple channels and combine them into an image? Let's find out. Okay, so regardless of what tool you've used, you've recorded some images using different filters. In my case, I use my doublet refractor with a Barlow and an electronic filter and an ASI 120mm, that's a monochrome sensor, and I recorded luminance, red, green, and blue. Now you might save these as SER files, AVI files, or in this case I just created them as TIFF files. And I'm using PixInsight just to show you what those TIFF files look like. So this is the luminance channel. You can see there's a little bit of turbulence and there's some vertical banding. I don't know if that's coming through, but we're going to deal with all of that. The challenge is how do we take all of these different images in different channels and combine them? The tool I like to use is called AutoStacker. So I'm going to open that, and you can see I've got a pretty straightforward interface here, the option to open, and right now it's asking for video formats. I'm going to change the image files, and I'm going to start with our Luminance channel, and I'm just going to pick all the files in this folder. Now what it's going to do is pop up a reference print frame. Now it's asking me for a stabilization anchor. I actually have better success if I use the planet option and I'm not quite sure why I think maybe because this was a more consistent image. But what I'm going to do is get it a little brighter and then I'm just going to say place AP grid. And this is going to put all these control points. I'm going to add a couple of my own that are how it maps each of the frames together and matches them up. So now we can click Analyze, and it's going to go through all the frames and sort of draw a map with a quality graph. Over here in Stacking, I'm going to take the best 70%, so I'm going to toss out 30% of these, normalize the stack, sharpen it, and the other thing I'm going to do is take advantage of the fact that there was a little play in the images, so we have a little bit of dithering, so I'm going to drizzle this three times, which is going to make the image three times bigger than what the sensor captured, taking advantage of those shifted pixels. So let's go ahead and click Stack and let that run through. And again, this is just the Luminance channel. And it's going through stacking the individual items, then it has to map how those stacked items relate to each other, and then it's going to combine them. And what we can do is go back to our folder, and what it's going to do is save the file right here in the root. So I'm going to take this second file, I'm just going to rename it L for luminance, and let's go ahead and pop that open, see what that looks like. So you can see we have a nice clear picture that's the sum of all the frames together. So we'll close that out. Now we're going to repeat that for the other channels. So I'm going to come here, close the previous job, open this time. This is the red channel, so we'll select all these files. I'm going to clear this out, make sure the brightness looks good, tweak it up a little bit, place the grid. And I replace the grid for each channel because I'm not assuming the channels are exactly the same. We'll go ahead and analyze. And I'm going to stack this the same way. And then we're going to repeat this for the green and the blue channels as well. thing I failed to call out when I opened these 
I'm going to open the blue. If I bring the brightness up a little bit, you can see that there's this banding inside. It's not too bad. That's because over here in image calibration, I have this column noise correction checked. If I uncheck it, it'll get a little bit noisier. So that's just auto stacker basically helping me out. So let's go ahead and get our blue channel analyzed and stacked. Okay, so now we have our four channels and let me show you what the problem is right now. I'm going to bring these into PixInsight and I'm done with Auto Stacker. So here's my luminance channel. Let's go ahead and take the red and set it directly on top. So that's actually a pretty good match. Let's take green, set that on top. Notice green is off. If I'm holding it on here, see how these craters are side by side? So the green channel is not aligned. We look at the red channel, it's pretty good, but green's not. And then if we do blue, we can see blue is off too. So what we're going to use is something called PIPP, which is Planetary Imaging Preprocessor. And we're going to take the same images, so let me just close them out of here. But we're going to take our channels that we have and bring them into PIPP. Now this is going to process them as if they're being stacked together, which is fine, because it's going to do the job of aligning them for us. So for this one, I'm going to say that it's a uh, lunar close-up. Input options, you'll see processing, it's converting color to monochrome, and it has the surface feature tracking. So the surface feature is going to use that to stabilize what the image is. So what we want to do is we want to take this preview window that pops up and take this feature, and I'm just going to basically center it on this crater that I know is in all the channels. So that's the feature I'm going to track. And this will actually reject frames without that feature. We're going to leave quality the same because we're just one frame per channel. I'm going to output individual TIFF files and go ahead and tell it to process. So now it's complete. And if I close this out, you'll see that this new folder was created that has this new set of images. So let's pull these in. and take a look at them. Now I'm using PixInsight for this, but you can just as easily use Photoshop or GIMP or any other software to combine these, but let me overlay this. So you can see perfect match here. If I overlay this one, perfect match here. If I overlay this one, perfect match. So we're looking good. So what I'm gonna do is take a process called Actually, let me just load my process icons because I have a lot of shortcuts that I have saved. And arrange icons. All right, so I'm going to take LRGB, which is right here. And this is basically going to allow me to combine each grayscale image as a channel. So I'm going to pick L. For the luminance channel, I'm going to pick R, G, and B. I'm going to take the saturation down to 0.4. That's going to saturate it a little bit more, but I like to do that because the moon is so uh, monochromatic that this will help bring out some color. And in case there's noise between the channels, we're going to use this noise reduction. So we'll run that. It's going to combine the channels 
and we get this result, which if we use our stretch, you can see it's looking a little purpley, so a little strong on the blue channel, but we can take care of that. So let's use our dynamic crop, and I'm just going to shave off these rough edges right here and right here. And one thing I like to do early in processing to avoid too many artifacts is I like to scale the image to the scale I want. So this is 2695-1895. I'd like it to be about twice that. So I'm going to go to resample. And we're going to pick this combined image. And I'm going to make it 200% of the size. So that's a good size I like to work with for detail. So let's get that fit. Now we want to deal with the excess of blue. So we're going to go into... Uh, first, what we'll do is we'll use our screen transfer function. And you can see that's what that looks like. If I link the channels, it looks like that. That's a lot better. So let's go ahead and take our histogram transformation. Go into preview for that. And right now it looks exactly the same. But if I drag this onto it, it's going to wash it out, which is fine. Because we are going to take that off and then apply it and now what we have is a stretched object so this is now nonlinear now you can see I've got a little bit of noise kind of some banding here so I'm gonna go ahead and do a multi-scale luminance transformation so this is applying to the luminance channel a multi-scale linear transformation and that's gonna handle some of this but some of this you can see is different colors so we're gonna probably do another pass on the chrome channel too so I'm gonna do that and if I show you my dialog you can see it's preset to run a different set of noise reduction on each layer so I'm gonna just drop that in there Okay, that's run. And it helped a little bit. So one of the things that I can do now too is I'm going to use a local histogram transformation or equalization. And I just know from practice I like 255.3 and 0.3. If we look at this, what it's going to do is just add some detail to the existing. So this is with it, without, with, without. So you can see it's just drawing out some more of the detail. Let's go ahead and apply that. And the last thing I'm going to do is another multi-scale linear transform, but this time a sharpness transform. So this is going to offset the bias to sharpen the image a little bit. So we'll run that, get nice and sharp. And then if we zoom in, you can see we've got kind of these little crazy artifacts. I find that the good finisher for this is the gray sea storation. So these are my settings that I use. We're going to apply that. And you can see it smoothed this out a little bit. We might want to go a couple more iterations.
Okay, probably a little too much, so I'm going to just undo that. But we are pretty close to where we want to be. And then we can now take it and using our resample, bring it back down to its original size. And that usually compresses away some of the issues and gives us a nice clean image to work with.